Hey guys, welcome to the junkyard. Um, we're putting a JDM engine into a bus and what I'm uh, having to do today is pull a wiring harness from a dual overhead cam 2.5 liter Subaru. So that's why we're here at the junkyard. So this is our guy that we're pulling from. Right here, this beautiful example. It's an Outback with 2.5 dual overhead cam. So we're gonna go through the process of pulling the, what, what you need for a JDM engine into a VW. The first thing I'm gonna do is take apart the dash and get the dash wires sorted out. And you can see this car is in a junkyard and it's dirty. So be prepared for that and be prepared to clean stuff up. <laughs> After getting stung by a wasp in my thumb, uh, all is cleaned up. <laughs> kind of a weird thing. Doesn't normally happen, guys, I swear. <laughs> but in this case, what we're gonna do is uh, just start taking apart the dash. And I'm gonna start on the passenger side. This is a main bolt. We've got a few up top and uh, we're just going to start disconnecting every every bolt we see basically that ties the dash into the frame so i'm just working stuff free and i have a video on uh, what i did in a 95 chassis and it it's about the same but you know just working stuff free here's a cool little trick to get the main console out, you have to, in this automatic, you have to pull this back. But since you don't have a key, generally, you can't. So you pull the little bezel that goes around here, and you'll see a little screw hole uh, right there. Actually, just not a screw hole, but just a hole. Depress the pin in there, and it'll come back. So now you have access to the console. Once you get these screws out in the console area, then I usually move over to the steering wheel, take the fascia off, you know, two plates, upper and bottom, and underneath there are some Phillips head screws. Then I drop this guy down. There's two uh, fasteners in here, 12 millimeter heads and uh and that sits free now and so for the most part we've got whoop, <laughs> for the most part we've got the dash just about ready to come out so i'm going to slowly start working that out and clip lines as as we need to so there we go got the main dash assembly out so now we're going to take a look at undoing the bolts or fasteners on this side of this uh, safety cross member and on this side. And then going to have to cut this metal bracket. There we have the two cuts and this guy will just kind of come right out. So now that the uh, safety bar is out of the way, we're going to approach getting the uh, heater core box out. Uh, there are quite a few fasteners that you can see on the bottom as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is go to the engine bay side and remove the intake air ducting so that I can reach the back side of this. Disconnect the heater lines that actually go into the heater core and take out the little rubber O-rings. Because when you go to try and pull this out, that's going to hang you up. Here we have the heater inlet and outlet right here and just the eight millimeter head uh, worm screws. Just undo those and then cut the, cut the line and take those hoses out and then you'll see there's these rubber O-rings. Just pull those out with a pair of pliers and then you'll have the exposed heater core nipples there. There we go heater is ready to come out once you get all the fasteners off of this equipment here it kind of just kind of just falls falls out i mean there is definitely some some movement that needs to happen 
but we're gonna take the blower and the heater core assembly out. We're gonna leave the air conditioning unit here just because it has air conditioning lines in the engine bay that we don't wanna deal with. There we go, the heater box and the blower are out. So now you can see the main bulk of the harness here. We're gonna be pulling the, over there is the main ignition relay. Just below that is the fuel pump relay with the green connector. We're gonna be pulling this entire string right here. And then you'll see that there's a grommet that goes into the engine bay right there. And uh, oftentimes there are two. So those go into the engine bay and we're gonna pull those as well. The ECU hides underneath here. We'll be pulling that. So right now I'm gonna work on getting the engine bay side clear. A couple things we wanna grab. We have the igniter and the start cable. Now some models don't have the igniter. It's built into the, um, to the uh, coil, this guy. But um, this model does. On the firewall, or I'm sorry, the shock tower on the passenger side, we've got our basically our atm atmospheric pressure sensors. We want to grab those, so I'm just going to grab this entire bracket. After you get everything kind of freed up, you can just kind of press these grommets, and they'll go right into the into the cab. Here is the chunk of harness that we are dealing with and you can see the grommets are pulled right in here and that goes down to the ECU which sits right here so I'm going to disconnect a few fasteners and we're all set to pull the main harness out there we go there's the main harness out of the car so now we need to take a look at the engine harness after removing the bolts that hold the intake manifold in it can kind of slide up and down pretty freely and once you do that it's actually really easy to get the engine harness out you'll also want to get the alternator harness and the AC connection and I generally just cut that harness at the fuse box fuse relay box here so that kind of wraps up the harness pool for a JDM um, engine, basically taking everything you can from the USDM car, as many sensors as you can locate and get, and uh, basically transferring that over to use the JDM hardware. So thanks for watching.